Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to test optocouplers or opto isolator using the multimeter. So I'm going to show you how to test a 4 pin optocoupler and a 5 pin or 6 pin optocoupler. So basically, this is the circuit diagram of the 4-pin optocoupler. Here we have a 4-pin optocoupler, as you can see in the motherboard. It contains 4 pins, as you can see. Okay. So this is the pin number 1, always marked with a white mark or a hole here. Here also we have another type of optocoupler, as you can see with four pins this is of course the pin number one okay pin number two three and four so this is the circuit diagram for six pin optocoupler as you can see it contains six pins of course here we have a real optocoupler ic as you can see with six pins this is its reference okay so let's begin with 4 pin optocoupler or opto isolator. As you can see, we have pin number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4. So basically, this optocoupler contains two components inside it an infrared diode and a phototransistor. So pin number 1 connected to the anode, and pin number 2 connected to the cathode of the diode. And over here, as you can see, the pin number 4 connected to collector. Here we have collector. And here we have emitter. So this is the same for all optocouplers with 4 pins. The same schematic. Always pin number 1 connected to anode, pin number 2 to cathode, pin number 4 to collector, and pin number 3 to emitter. So let's test the 4 pin optocoupler. So, of course, between pin number 1 and pin 2 of the optocoupler, we have a diode. So, if we test between pin number 1 and pin number 2, we should get a drop voltage about 1000, okay? And between pin number 3 and pin number 4, of course, we should not get anything in the multimeter, because always between collector and emitter, for every transistor, if you test it, you will not get anything. So, of course, we're gonna use the multimeter and we're going to select the diode option because we're going to test the diodes, okay? So, let's test this optocoupler as you can see. So, always you should first locate the first pin, okay? Pin number one. So, pin number one connected to anode and pin number two connected to cathode. And, of course, pin number three and pin number four connected to the phototransistor to the collector and emitter of the phototransistor. So let's check right now this optocoupler using the multimeter. So let's put the red probe in the first pin, the anode, and the black probe, of course, in the cathode, we should get about 1000, a drop voltage about 1000, as you can see in the multimeter. We have 1000. 100 means this diode is a good diode so if we swap the props of the multimeter we should not get anything in the multimeter okay so let's check as you can see we get nothing in the multimeter means the diode inside the opto isolator is a good diode now let's check the phototransistor course the pin number 3 and pin number 4 connected to the phototransistor. We should not get anything in the multimeter. As you can see, nothing means the phototransistor is not shorted. It's a good transistor. means the whole optocoupler is a good optocoupler. So, if you get any short between the optocoupler terminals, means the optocoupler is bad. So, if you get a short between the pin number 1 and pin number 2, or pin number 4 and pin number 3 for the transistor, means the optocoupler is shorted. You should replace it 
with another optocoupler with the same reference. So let's check now this optocoupler. As you can see, using the same working principle, of course, we should always locate the pin number one. So let's put the red probe of the multimeter in pin number one or anode and the black probe in the cathode. We should get a reading about 1000, as you can see, 1100. So this diode is a good diode inside the optocoupler. So if we swap, of course, the probes, we should not get anything in the multimeter. As you can see, nothing means this diode is a good diode. Now let's check the photo transistor in the other side of the optocoupler. Of course, we should not get anything between pin number three and pin number four. Because if you check any transistor between collector and emitter, you will find open, an open circuit. So here we have one in the multimeter, means the transistor is good, means the whole opt isolator is good. Okay? So this optocoupler is a good optocoupler. So of course, I want to add that if you find any short between optocoupler pins, means the optocoupler is shorted. So you should never find a short between pin number one and pin number two and pin number three and pin number four. Now we're gonna see how to test the six pin optocoupler. So basically this is the circuit diagram of course of six pin optocoupler. Okay. Here we have the diode and the phototransistor. As you can see, the same as the optocoupler with four pins. So the pin number one is connected to anode and pin number two connected to cathode of the diode. Exactly the same as this optocoupler. Okay, always pin number one and pin number two connected to the diode or to infrared diode. So here pin number four and pin number five connected to the phototransistor. So pin number four connected to emitter and pin number five connected to collector. And of course the pin number three and pin number six are not used. No connection. In C means no connection. And sometimes in some optocouplers, you can find that the pin number six is connected to the base. Okay. So sometimes the pin number six of a six pin optocoupler is connected to the base, but you can discard it. It's not important. Important things is the diode and the phototransistor. Okay. So here, as you can see, we have the optocoupler that we're gonna check. Its reference is CNY17F-2, as you can see. Always this edge means the pin number one, as you can see. This is pin number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So always the pin number one and pin number two connected to the diode. This is connected to anode, the pin number one, and the pin number two connected to the cathode. Of the diode so we're gonna check this optocoupler and of course we're gonna check the pin number one and pin number two where we have the diode so we should get a reading about 1000 drop voltage the same as the optocoupler with four pins so let's check we're gonna put the red probe in the pin number one and the black probe as you can see in pin number two we should get a reading, as you can see, about 1,150. 1, this is a good diode, basically. So, if we swap the props, we should not get anything in the multimeter. So, we're gonna put the black probe in the first pin and the red probe in the second pin. Here, we don't get anything in the multimeter, means the diode inside the optocoupler is a good diode. Now let's check the other side where we have the phototransistor. So basically the phototransistor we're gonna check between collector and emitter. So pin number four and pin number five as we have in the schematic. We will not find anything, no reading in the multimeter. Means the phototransistor is serviceable, is a good phototransistor. And of course this means that the optocoupler is a good optocoupler okay so you can 
look for do data sheet for any optocoupler you want for example let's search for the data sheet of this optocoupler a six pin optocoupler cny 17f-2 so you can just pick the first result as you can see we have data sheet okay and here of course this is all data sheet website where we have data sheets for integrated circuits here we have as you can see the six pin optocoupler for power supplies here we have the same part number or reference as you can see cny17f-2 so you can just click this pd file to download it and then as you can see here you can click download over here click the reference and here we go we have the file as you can see so this is the file the six pin dip optocoupler for power supply applications so of course to download this pd file you can just click here here we have description features applications as you can see we have power supply regulators it can be used for digital logic inputs microprocessor inputs and so on and this is the schematic as you can see the same schematic as we have seen before the pin number one connected to anode the pin number two connected to cathode as you can see pin number three and pin number six are not used and of course pin number four and five connected to the photo transistor okay and of course you can read other things like characteristics the temperature the voltage the maximum voltage and minimum voltage and so on